So here's today's oddment. This is mildly interesting. This is a stamps.com electronic USB scale, you know, for mailing stuff, presumably with stamps.com. So it's probably good for maybe 10 pounds, I'd guess. Not much externally. You've got a light on the front, a switch, which I don't really understand the purpose of because it's all it's USB only. And then the top is springy. It's very it's a strong spring, but it's it's springy, so that's what actually depresses. So just I'm gonna pop this open to see what they've done internally. Warning, blah blah blah, FCC. Five pounds. Maximum weight five pounds, so I was a little off for saying ten pounds. It's just screws are under the feet. Just generally the way cheap electronics like this is done. So I do want to try and not irrevocably damage this because the guy, I, I kind of stole it from one of my coworkers and said, ah, give me that, I'm going to take it apart. And he was bemused, but, you know, as long as I get it back to him in working condition, he doesn't care. So that are, those are Phillips. Four screws holding it together. There we go. Oh, yeah. Supposedly. Yeah. Bottom's loose. Well, it appears everything is actually connected to the bottom. So the USB connector, I believe, is what's caught. Get the screws out so I don't lose them. So I think. This is kind of, it's got a band around it, but the scale actually kind of is mounted on the bottom plate from the look of it. Let's see. We're stuck. Uh, I think the top comes off. With some. It looks like it appears. Held on with clips. Get a better. Yep. Okay, I see how this holds together now. I think. Stick in there. Yep. So this was just held on by four clips. So you just push the spudger against and then they unclip and there you go. So here we are. There's the load plate. You can see it's kind of wobbly. Let's see the terminal to the power switch on there. That is really tightly down. That isn't coming loose. Anyways, what holds this bottom case in? Let's see if I can take that off. Ah. Just kind of fits over. Now the wires are held down with copious amounts of tape, but it looks like there's not much in there, so I am going to go get a bigger screwdriver in one second. Here we are. Big slotted drive. There we go, finally. Those were ridiculously tight. I wonder why they put those screws on so tightly. These go into a little, rather adorable load cell that I've probably just bent all out of whack. So, look how long that screw is. So there, 
is the load cell. So you can obviously see there's very little in here. So there are four wires. So this looks, it's probably a four wire bridge. So you have four wires that go to the load cell, run to this, which is an analog amplifier, and it appears it's loose. And then the output of this runs to this board, which has a Holtec microprocessor on it, which is an extremely Holtec is just like an utterly cheap, you know, prom only microprocessor line. So since it appears I don't need to take the bottom off, I'll get the screws back real quick. Otherwise I will forget to. So Holtec is basically makes a whole lot of very like extraordinarily cheap microprocessors with you know various interfaces. Um, they don't really even make them with flash as far as I know. Maybe their dev kit have one, but they might just use an emulator. I don't know. I, I know that um, on some of the Stack Exchange sites, the electronic electronics.stack exchange or stack yeah, stackexchange.com, there's been a couple, one guy who's been trying to track down information on how to program them and like it's apparently largely under NDA because they don't even bother with hobbyists. But you know, I think they're mostly, you know, you know, kind of stuff like this, which is farmed out to a contract manufacturer. So you can see there's um, this is a compliant, it's like a silicone. And there's gonna be silicone on the top and silicone on the bottom. And then what happens is this deforms and there's basically a for a flex sensitive force a flex sensitive resistor in there. And as it flexes very slightly, it the one on the bottom is compressed and the one on the top is you know stretched and it changes the balance in a Wheatstone bridge and then that is what's detected by the um, you know and then this there's an amplifier here so you can see down there we have it looks like there's a like an off-the-shelf probably a, an amplifier board and then it goes into the microprocessor board and then over here we just have these LEDs go to the light on the front and then these are the power switch which may in fact be switching USB power to the whole affair let me change lenses and we'll get a better look at these devices. Sorry for the wobbly camera. So here is the amplifier board. So you can see it's got TI LM324s. That's an LS74. So this is a, I, I'm pretty sure the 324 is either a comparator or an op amp. I would guess it's an op amp since it's, you know, it, w it would only, an, uh, nothing other than an op amp would be useful here. Um, LS74 I wonder if that's, is that a I mean that's low power shot key I mean is that like a 74 LS74 it could be but I thought that was just the flip flops so anyways this here is an LN393 got a key one, I bet this is a precision voltage reference um, or no, wait you want to drive a current source, so I bet this this is a current source well, let's see, I can't see where these wires, these traces run, but um, a lot of, off, a lot of analog stuff in here. So generally you, you have a current source, which is probably what this is part of. You have a current source that drives a set current and then you basically one half runs around one half of the bridge and the other half runs around the other half of the bridge and you measure the differential voltage between those two points. So I, they're probably, unless this is a, a, an instrumentation amplifier, and I don't think it is, they probably are forming a different, you know, a difference amplifier in here, you know, a, um, they basically, they have an, an instrumentation amplifier composed of three op amps, which is what it takes, two or three op amps depending on the topology you want. This is version one. It's interesting, you can see there's some test points on here. 070910, so that looks like this was a, um, what is that, July 7, July 9th on, this is only two years old, so it's pretty recent. Got an electrolytic down here, so this is presumably ground and power. We run over here. So here's the CPU board. It's a Holtec HT82K94E. So I wonder. 24LCO2. Some transistors. Lots of goo. So I wonder whether this has an onboard analog digital converter. Or if they're doing something like dual slope or something out of here, maybe. That wouldn't put it past me because that would mean all they need to do is they just need to do precision timing in the microprocessor. Which I bet, you know, I mean, you've got a crystal, 6 megahertz crystal, so 
you know, you can, generally USB is multiples of 6 or 24 or 12 because the, the USB 2.0 full speed is needs a 48 megahertz clock so they're internally PLLing this up to 48 megahertz in this microprocessor which self-evidently has USB support baked in I don't know that company, A-P-T-S-C-H-I something but it's a 24 LCO2 so that's probably calibration constants for this scale so they probably calibrate it with a bunch of reference loads also interesting as you can see there's some unstuffed options it looks like there's another option for this which involves a um, power jack which is kind of interesting because I can't think of really many situations maybe they have an option that uses this board and probably has an LCD which is what I bet this goes to so this probably I bet this board supports another version of the scale that works as a standalone you know again this has no display or anything so it requires a computer to be of any use um, I bet they have a version that functions fine as a standalone device and this has like an optional USB interface so they may not even stuff the USB but they can share that all across one device. There's the top Let's see if I can get that in focus so there's the um, the sensor and you can see how this is a compliant epoxy and then this there's a you know you can't even see it on the camera but that will flex very slightly. I mean it flexes but the, that's more the baseboard flexing than anything else because this it's just plastic. But there you go. Way out of focus. It'll actually be interesting to kind of poke around in here when it's running, but I don't think I'm going to bother. One interesting thing is there's this big film cap there. I wonder what warranted that. I guess there must be some precision filtering in here or something. But normally I would have expected them to try and get away with the ceramic. I wonder what necessitated a film cap. Well, anyways, one second. Switch lenses again. Let's see if the camera stops. Apparently, changing lenses when it's recording kind of makes it freak out. I know it stops recording if I take the um, the lens with communications off, but I just took the. Um, this is the other lens I'm using. It's a. A Canon macro lens um, on an adapter. Just a this is just a dead adapter, just mechanical only. And I was kind of expecting it to be able to handle, you know, putting a new lens on it without, you know. I guess it stops. Anyways, I'm gonna put this back together and make sure it works. And there you go.